Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. I wanted to jump on today, guys, to address the dip that we saw yesterday and kind of explain what's going on there, as well as address some news that I saw that is pretty alarming uh, when it comes to the dollar. So stick around to the end of the video. You're not going to want to miss this episode. But before we get into all of that, as always, guys, I am kind of spotlighting for them Animal Sanctuary this month, trying to help them out. If you guys have a dollar or two that you guys can spare, please go over and help them out. Now, this is their uh, web page, and I do leave that link in the description. Um, but if you want to just type it in, it's the, the number four themsanctuary.org. Now go over to them. This is their front page. This will come right up. You can see some of the animals here. You can also go up here and kind of meet, um, you know, all of the animals that they have there. See, see who you're really supporting. But you can see right here on the front page, you can donate to their PayPal right there. Uh, you can go over to their Patreon or any of their social media there and help them out. They are also a 501c nonprofit, so anything you donate to them helps you out when it comes time to pay your taxes. So go over and help them out. Now, let's jump right into it. Uh, what's, uh, what's going on and what was the dip that we saw? Um, in price in pretty much every crypto yesterday. Uh, what we saw was a pretty big dip starting first thing in the, in the morning, right as an important economic data came out. Now, this was the job openings data that came out first thing in the morning. I want to jump over to uh, this article. Now, this is what most people saw. Um, articles that said something like this, something to the, the, the uh, idea of U.S. economy adds more jobs than expected in May as unemployment ticks higher. So more jobs. That's good, right? Well... When it comes to investing, it's kind of like an opposite day kind of thing. Like more good for the economy is actually bad for investors in some crazy sense. Because when the economy is doing good and, and Jerome Powell has came out, the, the head of the, the Federal Reserve, and he keeps coming out and saying, you know, if the economy is good, then we probably won't cut rates. And we've seen the, you know, economic numbers on GDP and manufacturing and all of these other economic uh, things come in soft, signaling that the economy is not as strong as people say. But then we get this jobs data that comes out and most of the headlines say pretty much what this one says is there's more jobs. The economy is strong. So, uh, so that leads investors and the, you know, the, this speculative, fragile butterfly money that, that just flutters around on any kind of information like this, this causes people to sell because they don't think we're going to get rate cuts this year. However, guys, you have to dig deeper into the data because this, all of these headlines that came out and said the economy is strong, they didn't read all of the data or they didn't analyze it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on because as you can see right here, guys, it also says unemployment rate takes higher. So how is that possible? We have more jobs, but we have more unemployment. How is that possible? So um, I just want to jump through this. We're going to run through what this article says and then why you need to dig deeper. Um, so this says the market added 
thousand non-farm payroll jobs in May. That is significantly, almost double uh, what was expected, which was 180,000 jobs. That's what was expected. So it comes in, those two numbers show that the economy is booming, actually. Uh, but meanwhile, the unemployment rate rose 4% from 2-4% from 3.9. So unemployment goes higher, but we have like massive amounts of, of new jobs. So what's going on? Uh, this article didn't even come close to touching it, which is Yahoo Finance. Um, some fine reporting there. So we're going to jump over. This was the best one that I could find that actually kind of hits on what's going on. So this is from Forbes. This says non-farm role or farm payroll mislead. Payrolls mislead. The, the labor market is weakening. Inflation is falling. Okay, so let's scroll down here um, and see what this, this says. Now, this is the, the part of the jobs data that most people didn't see or didn't analyze and, you know, really figure out what's going on because full-time jobs fell 625,000 in May, okay? Um, so... Full-time jobs actually went down significantly. This says, apparently it has become increasingly difficult for job seekers to find full-time employment. As a result, part-time employment, which BLS, you know, this is the survey that, that goes into this jobs data, counts as equal to full-time jobs. Now, Part-time shot up by 286,000, and those holding multiple jobs rose another 16,000 to $8.4 million. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. Like, what is really going on? We've got employment going up, jobs a quarter, uh, supposedly are going up as well, but we're seeing full-time jobs decrease and part-time jobs increase as well as people who are working more than one job increase. So guys, what's going on here is the economy is tightening and employers are looking for ways to, I mean, ideally what they would love to do is keep the amount of labor that they've got right now. But since the economy is tightening, they have to try and do that and cut costs at the same time. So how do they do that? Well, one way, and this, this is where it comes to labor, is they cut full-time jobs and they hire part-time jobs. This cuts their... Uh, their uh, what they have to pay for labor, their costs on labor. Now, this does this because you don't have to pay, generally, you don't have to pay part-time help as much as you do full-time help. On top of that, you don't have to pay part-time help benefits like health insurance and time off and all of these things. It cuts your uh, job job costs, your labor costs significantly. So yes, we are seeing the economy tighten, um, but the media did a bang up job. Most of the, the um, headlines came out and said, oh guys, don't count on, don't, don't count on any uh, rate cuts this year. The economy is booming which just isn't, isn't the case. Now I'm going to jump over to uh, another interesting fact that happened yesterday, guys. And this is the 
uh, ETF inflows, the Bitcoin ETF inflows, guys. We have had now 19 straight days of inflows. This is a record. We have never had this many straight days of inflows into the Bitcoin ETFs. So that is massive news. Even though we saw a dip yesterday, we still saw the Bitcoin ETFs pulling in more and more Bitcoin. So these fragile, uh, you know, very delicate investors that sold on misleaded or misled uh, headlines are going to feel really silly when they really kind of dig in deeper and realize that they saw, sell, sold out their entire uh, Bitcoin and crypto bags to BlackRock. Sucks to be them. Ah, guys, it's disappointing to see, but it happens. Okay, um, so getting into the next bit um, of news, I'm not sure how I missed this, but a few weeks ago, China ramped up its de-dollarization efforts and dumped a record amount of US bonds. Guys, this is also from Yahoo Finance. I'm not sure why I keep finding myself back to Yahoo, but um, anyways, this says China sold a record number of $53.3 billion worth of treasuries and agency bonds in the first quarter, Bloomberg reported. Now, this was back in uh, May, May 21st, that all of this kind of got reported. So again, I'm not sure how I missed this, but China is obviously upping its game on getting off of the dollar. And this kind of leads into BRICS. You know, China is part of BRICS. Um, but, you know, we see China dumping US bonds. And I actually, how I learned about this was last night, one of the guys that I follow on YouTube, and he does really some really good videos, um, guys. This is Andre Jeek. And I am going to jump over, you know, to his video. Um, he does some good stuff. So if you guys want to go over and follow him, it would, you know, he does some really good stuff. But... What really took me, he, he gets into China dumping, you know, U.S. bonds in this video. But what really took me back, guys, was this section that I'm going to show you. And he gets into how our uh, money system works and the interest based, you know, debt that is issued on our dollars. Now, guys, I hit on this in my very first video that I put out on YouTube. So, guys, if you want to jump back to the early days <laughs> a few months ago when I was really, really awkward um, talking on camera. And this is really what I said back then. So I want to I want to just show you guys this. The global bond market is estimated to be worth roughly three times more than the global stock market. Part of the reason why this is, is because stocks represent ownership in something and bonds represent the debt. What's crazy is we will always have more debt than ownership of stuff. And this will be true for infinity. Think about it like this. If all the world ever had was this much money, as long as the concept of borrowing money in exchange for paying interest is a concept that exists, where would someone go to pay for the interest on a loan if this is all the money that exists? It would be impossible. We'd have to create more debt to pay for the debt that we've created. 
And that's ironically why this piece of fabric doesn't represent ownership of stuff. It represents an instrument of debt. Now the US has a debt level of over 34.7 trillion. Countries sell this debt. Okay, so guys, that just blew my mind because I, I don't hear many people actually talking about that, about our interest-based debt money system. And this was what I brought up in my very first video, and this is why I said this is why I got into Bitcoin, because Bitcoin fixes this. Bitcoin isn't issued on interest and debt. So I don't know, guys, that gets a, a little bit further away from the point on uh, China de-dollarizing, but when I watched that, it just took me back because I, again, I don't see many people talking about that. So if you guys want a little more information on that, like I said, jump back to my very first video. Um, but the second and arguably the most important and most alarming news on de-dollarization involves Saudi Arabia, guys. I'm going to jump over here and show you this. Now, this is The Hill and also The Wall Street Journal kind of, kind of saying the same thing, but I just wanted to jump into this easy blurb uh, just from this search. And it says, Saudi Arabia reportedly considered uh, considering accepting yuan, which is the China's currency, um, instead of the dollar for oil sales. Saudi and Chinese officials are in talks to price some of its Gulf, Gulf nation's oil sales in yuan rather than dollars or euros. The Wall Street Journal reported Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. Now, the reason this is so important, guys, maybe you, you have heard about the petrodollar. But the petrodollar is kind of this agreement between the U.S. and oil nations like Saudi Arabia and an agreement that they will use dollars to settle oil sales. And this is one big, big reason why the dollar is the U.S. or the, the world reserve currency. So, you know, they're, they're obviously talking to China, which is part of BRICS. I believe Saudi Arabia is either part of BRICS or, or looking to join BRICS. Um, the last I heard, I, I think they joined. So they're looking, they're all looking to go off the dollar, but if they start using other currencies to settle oil sales, this causes a gigantic hit to the dollar, which the DXY will go down, you know, and this, this affects probably our, the whole, the entirety of our economy, as well as probably the economies all, the, all around the world. But I'm going to jump over to another um, little comment. Now, this is on Binance, and I'm not sure how much stock I really hold in this. Um, so let me see if I can just zoom in on this for you guys. Doesn't seem like it's working. Anyways, this says Mohammed bin Salman has chosen not to renew a security agreement with the U.S. Um, set to expire June 9th, which is tomorrow. And uh, this means Saudi Arabia can now sell oil to other and other goods in currencies like the RMB, euros, yen, yuan, and more instead of just the U.S. dollar. It's a big change because it challenges the, dollar, uh, the dominance of the petrodollar system, which has been in place since the U.S. stopped tying its currency to gold in 1972. Guys, back then it was Nixon, uh, and we Nixon decided we were going to go off of um, 
gold and in a way re replaced it with oil um, and but effectively kind of uh, created the fiat system that we're in right now. Now, this decision is expected to speed up the process of moving away from the U.S. dollar. Okay, so obviously, you know, people not using the dollar and oil is a big, big part of that will affect the dominance and the um, reserve currency status of the U.S. and the U.S. dollar. Now, I tried to kind of find a mainstream article on this and there's not a lot of talk on it you know there there's some talk about Saudi Arabia and selling to China and this and that but there's not a lot of mainstream coverage on what that does to the dollar and the whole agreement of the petrodollar. So I did find this article again from Yahoo Finance, guys, and this says Saudi Arabia says it's open to the idea of trading in currencies besides the US dollar. Does this spell doom for the greenback? Three reasons why not to worry. Okay, so obviously Yahoo caught caught a scent of this whole uh, kind of rumor, really, in, in the air, and they're, they're kind of uh, coming in and trying to dismiss it. First of all, they, you know, call it a rebellion against the U.S. dollar, uh, which is kind of crazy. But right here, guys, it does cite that the U.S. has weaponized the dollar. And guys, this is, this is really the point. Um, you know, people, the reason these countries are wanting to go off of the dollar is because our politicians and our government have weaponized the dollar. And anytime any country does something that we don't like, we pull out the dollar and try and coerce them with sanctions. So you can't really blame these other countries for wanting to go off the dollar. You know, we are the only ones that we can blame for all of this happening. You know, we, we've weaponized it and now it's being weaponized against us. And that's about as, as blatant as it gets. But guys, this article, <laughs> it's kind of funny because, you know, the three reasons why you shouldn't worry really just came off as kind of uh, pandering and trying to, to calm emotions. Uh, but here's the three reasons why you shouldn't worry. Replacement or replacing the US dollar would be hard. So don't worry because replacing the dollar is hard. <laughs> and I did read all of this, guys, but it doesn't, to me, this doesn't really make much sense. The other, the second reason is other countries have a lot of catching up to do. So don't worry if they go off the dollar. They're, they're so far behind, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're dumping billions of dollars of bonds and treasuries on our market. They've got a lot of catching up to do. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and the third reason, is just plainly that the U.S. will still be okay. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I will leave the link to that uh, article in the description, in the credits section of my videos. If you want to go over and read that entire thing, the U.S. will still be okay. Just, you know, calm down, guys. It's not going to be that bad. Um, I, th I don't know. That Yahoo Finance article was, in my opinion, a big puff piece, but um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's bad, guys. It's not going to be good if the dollar crashes for our economy. 
Um, it, you know, it's not going to be good for our economy. It's not going to be good for a lot of economies all over, all over the world. But guys, we have, like I said, we've kind of brought this on ourselves. Our government has done a bang up job with threatening people and using the dollar that now it's really coming back and biting us. So it's kind of scary, but the good news is, is, is that there is that way to opt out now. We can get out of the dollar and it's still going to suck. You know, if, if the dollar crashes, it is going to suck. And I'm not going to, I'm not saying I'm not out here trying to be an alarmist and saying that this is just going to absolutely kill the dollar, but it will make a difference. Okay. And you know, you're going to be better off if you're in Bitcoin and opted out of the dollar, but it's, it's still going to suck. You know, if, if things go bad, things are going to go bad. You know, you're going to be better off in another currency uh, that's not tied to the dollar, but it's still going to suck for our economy as a whole. And, you know, I don't know, guys, is it going to happen like all instantly? I don't know. I, I would like to say not. Um, you know, finances move pretty slowly. But again, when it comes to hyperinflation, things move slowly, 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 and then all at once. And before you can try and get out of the dollar, it's already too late or out of any currency. When hyperinflation hits, I mean, that's the definition of it. It's hyperinflation. It's, you know, you're, you've got 2% inflation going, 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 and then all of a sudden it's 50% inflation. So I would like to say that it, it won't happen quickly, but I don't know, guys, it's uh, better to be safe than sorry, in my opinion. And I am definitely um, positioned against this. So anyways, guys, lastly, uh, before I go, I have noticed that you guys um, a lot of you guys have been using my referral code and gotten into the Tangem hardware wallet. And I just want to th say thank you very much. It's not a ton that I get from those referrals, but it does help. And I'm glad that I can help you guys get that 10% off and get you guys into self-custody where you can own your own crypto and be self-sovereign. Um, now, um, first of all, congratulations if you guys are into self-custody, whether you guys used my referral code or not. Congratulations. It's a big, big step to really um, being self-sufficient and self-sovereign, right? So cheers to you guys. And for the rest of you guys that have not made that jump yet, I really encourage everyone to get off exchanges because with FTX happening in the past, with Mt. Gox happening years ago, we've seen this happen over and over, guys. So to not protect yourself against this is kind of crazy. And if you're leaving your crypto on exchange, you really do run that risk of something happening to it. Now, I use several hard hardware wallets, but the most secure wallet, um, but one of the most secure hardware wallets out there, and really at a very reasonable price, is that Tangem wallet. Um, you know, I think the two card set is about $50. Uh, and the three card set is like $10 more. So like $60, but guys, some of the other wallets that I use and have used in the past are like the ledger, which was, I think a hundred, $150. Um, the Ellipal, Ellipal Titan, which was two fifty for the set that I got. And then, you know, you've just got 
a ton more expensive than even those. And I, I really do think the user experience, it's just so easy, the Tangem wallet, to set up, to get transferred into that. Super easy. And, and it's an EAL6 uh, uh, security. So it's top of the line security with these cards as well. Um, so there's just a lot of things that it is superior to others that are more expensive, in my opinion. So if you want to get off exchanges into a, a cold wallet, cold hardware wallet, my referral is K6KTW6. If you guys want to get into that, I was going to make something that came up on the screen and gave that code out. I'll try and do that in future videos, but I also do leave that referral code in the description of my videos. So guys, if you want to get into self-custody, want to get into this Tangem wallet, which honestly is one of the best out there, go down into the description uh, and you'll see a spot where it says Tangem referral code K6KTW6 or T TWX. <laughs> Find that referral code. If you go over to Tangem, you put that referral code in, it's going to get you 10% off your entire order. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.